say. Hey, right. welcome to Offside with Haas McGuire. I'm Haas. I'm McGuire. And this is the segment we call uh, Shooting the... Um, shot. Shot. Shooting the Shot. Uh, and today we're shooting the shot with uh, Bruins legend uh, number eight, Ken Hodge. Ken Hodge. That's a big introduction. I know, I, sh I should have gone more. Well, Liam knows more of the stats. Yeah, well, I'll, I got him upstairs. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so, so we're here. Liam, why don't you, you, why don't you actually yeah. introduce, you do the, the formal. Well, you just introduced the show very succinctly. Yeah, very nice. I did it, I did it. Oh, he did it. It's great. It's awesome. Chris has got us going into the show. And Ken, first of all, thank you for having us in your home. This is, this is, my God, it's, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous here. And yeah, look, at, for those of you who may not remember Ken Hodge, because you're too young, because we're now dating ourselves, Chris, because we remember him. This is a guy who broke in with the Chicago Blackhawks, who was in the big Phil Esposito deal of May 15, 67, which we'll talk more about later, which brought him to the Bruins, which really was the final... The final piece of the puzzle. Bobby Orr had come in the year before. Boston still missed the playoffs. They pick up Esposito, Hodge, and Stanfield. The entire dynamic of the team changed. Within a couple years, they got their first Stanley Cup. Two years after that, they've got their second. He has a 50-goal season. He scored 328 goals. He played over 880 games. He had 800 points. He had a 50-goal season. As I said, he played 97 playoff games with 79 points, Chris. And this is just unbelievably sitting here in his home talking to, as you said, a legend. Not only that, on the line with Phil Esposito and Wayne Cashman, when they were put together the first year, they set what was then the all-time record for points by a line. This is what this man and his teams accomplished in his time before he went to the New York Rangers where he finished his career. Not only that, his son got in the NHL. He had, his sons all played hockey and involved in hockey at a high level, winning championships, East Coast Hockey League. His son playing in the NHL as well, as I mentioned, Ken Jr. And, uh, man, it's just a pleasure to be here, buddy. Thank you. I'll leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Are you finished? <laughs> no, it's great. Thanks for coming down. Oh, this is just outstanding. I got to, listen, I got to ask you one thing right out of the gate, because you are the answer to a really neat anecdote. You are the first non-Canadian-born player to have a 50-goal season because you were born in England. And a hundred point season. And a hundred point season. So can you please tell us how? how why? Where was your dad from England? Was it what, what? What's the process that had you born in England before I believe you moved to Toronto? You want me to go through the whole born? <laughs> <Well, laughs> Liam, Liam didn't get to talk to his dad. <laughs> like, my dad was in the armed forces. Okay. Over in England and uh, Canadian, and naturally, and uh, met my mother and. They got together over in England, and uh, I was born in England, and my mother came back to uh, Toronto, Canada, basically, with my my uh, younger brother, who uh, she was expecting when she got to Toronto. So okay. I was born in England yeah. uh, during that period, and uh, my brother was born in Toronto. What age would you have been? Oh, you? my God. Age, as size was. I was premature when I was born. I was three pounds. Oh. Well, you filled in. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't need that well, but, yeah. but no, I was very lucky, very yeah. fortunate. And, and are you a 42, 43 birth? 44. 44, 1944. Yeah. yeah. So right at the end of the war. Right at the end of the war. Right at the end of the war. Yeah. Oh, that was uh, that. That's a bonus. You know, you talk you talk about the war in a period of time. So I don't recall that mid, much uh, being right. in England and whatever, knowing what they went through or whatever. But yeah. Outside of listening to my mother talking about some of the bombings and some of the shelters and everything like that, they had to be in. But uh, it was it was a good time to uh, to. To come together, <laughs> but suffice yeah. to say, I didn't know. I, did, I I actually didn't know that. And, yeah. And you know, I mean, I'm not known for my trivia knowledge. No, no, right? No, but, that's uh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's very he's good he's, on a lot of topics. He's carving me. All I know, and I love it. This is like, great, man. Can you come with us, please? Yeah, this is fantastic. <laughs> we'll be the three Stooges. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. Who's there you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I've, I used to be. Uh, so well, about, well, you, oh, you know what? No, we started talking beforehand, before we went like live or anything. But you mentioned that uh, your wife and yourself have been together for, uh, if you don't mind if I mention, 62 years? 62 years. 62 years, which, if I'm doing the math, you were 18 years old. 18 years old, playing hockey in St. Catharines. Right. And how I met my wife, basically, was my brother-in-law uh, was a goaltender at that time for the... Uh, 
Catherine, uh, St. Catherine's Blackhawks. Right. Okay. And uh, she would come to the game to watch her brother. She didn't know that I was going to be the, uh, the future of her future. Really? And uh, we got together and... So I have a question about that, though. Because, <laughs> Here we go. No, no, no. And, and, and because I know, I, like, I grew up with the guys who have made the show, right? And and each of them met their girlfriends, and Jim Fox, in grade school. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But met them as young men before they had made it and what have you. And, and I've always wanted to ask how you feel about your success as you can attribute it to your partner being that solid base for you or or or, or not like you know what I mean it's, it's absolutely true and listen you don't raise five kids have all five healthy kids I have nine healthy grandchildren now yeah and uh, not have a good partner to uh, take on a lot of the responsibility I mean we weren't home that much yeah, yeah, yeah. we traveled by train and buses and everything like that back in the back in the early days so somebody had to be there to go to the the hockey schools, the camps, the school, and whatever. Uh, yeah. And if you don't have a strong partner, you're in a lot of trouble. And, and, and it was obviously before you were famous that you met. Yeah. So your fame, you know, certainly in the 70s, there was not, a, a, I mean, to me anyway, was not a bigger line, right? And so if you were a hockey fan in the 70s, yeah. you knew who Ken Hodge was. And if you were certainly in Boston in the 1970s, yeah. right? And there must have been women throwing themselves at you. Is this recorded? <laughs> <laughs> is this being recorded? No, you know, this is at the point. Mary, Mary. This is at the point where Ron Dugay told us to turn it right. off. Say, you know, and the story <laughs> ends there. He said it's like I do, by the way. Oh, yeah. I know. I, yeah, I yeah. did not mean it in that way. Yeah, yeah. Right. But you know, yeah, there was opportunities, there were situations, or whatever. But you know what? Yeah. I think Paul Newman had the greatest saying around. Why would I go out and have a, a steak when I can get like a filet mignon at home? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, like, I, yeah. my, my relationship was tremendous. I mean, my wife and I, again, give and take, and the kids and everybody, I mean, we, we were all hockey buddies, you know. Yeah. We yeah. went to the rinks together and whatever, and certainly during that period of time in the Bruins, when we were in our 70s and doing what we were doing in the 60s and 70s, uh, it was a great time to be in New England. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, yeah. It, it was an honor to play in front of the Boston Bruins fans. Yeah. I mean, yeah. truthfully. I mean, it was an honor to play in the National Hockey League. Yeah, I mean, here's a kid in Canada growing up and watching Stanley Cups and watching Toronto and watching Montreal and Detroit and yeah. you know Chicago was basically gonna uh, coming along. Yeah, you know, until they got Bobby Hull and uh, yeah. then they got rid of Hodge and Esposito. So <laughs> that's right. They went right, <laughs> right, they went right, they went right back down again. Well, yeah, yeah but you know it, it, it was it was a great time. It was a great era. I mean, I'm proud to say that uh, I was part of that uh, Bruins era back in that time that yep. we helped cultivate the game we helped cultivate the game off the ice as well as on the ice uh, you know hockey exploded I mean they were building hockey rinks all over the place in New England yeah, yeah. all over the place yeah to get the uh, the youth involved, youth right? involved. Yeah. I mean so it was unique it was different it was, it was a great time I wouldn't so, change it for anything so as a father as a grandfather oh. okay <laughs> no no you know but uh, so what do you see as the importance of the game I, I mean the you know, the game has gotten, some will say, out of hand. It's gotten too much about money or whatever. <laughs> Can we tell you what we made? No. no <laughs> it wasn't money. <laughs> no, well, no, this yeah. is the thing. Uh, but it's gotten about, and even for in the youth hockey, it's, it's quite expensive. It's very expensive. But what, yeah. I mean, obviously, your, your children and probably your grandchildren are, are going to be playing hockey or have played hockey in the past. Uh, why is that? Why do you think it's important? Play the players hockey. have to give back. They have to give back to the community, and they do. I think they do a great job. I mean, there's a lot more attention focused on them with their notoriety and, and yeah. you know everything going on in the game today. And it's the games. We got what 32 teams in National Hockey League. Yeah. So there's hockey everywhere. Yeah. You know the south, the north, and east and west. I mean everywhere. And I think it's great for the game and the players. I mean I I, I know a lot of the players or whatever. I mean we were just in Boston for the 100th centennial yeah. celebration. Yeah. Yeah. And those players couldn't have been so, so much more nicer than what they were. Really, yeah. and they yeah. did a great job, and you know they yeah. were respectful for us coming in to their territory. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I remember back in the days when some of the older players would come back to the Boston Garden, the Boston in the broom and whatever. Yeah, and you would sit there in awe. And of course, yeah. we had Mill Schmidt hanging over us I, all the I, time. I know, right? Yeah, Dumard, I mean, yeah. Some of the old names are just fantastic. 
Yeah. And the players were just respectful to them. Did you ever meet Eddie Short? No, I you know, something I played in Springfield. Yeah. Uh, I met. I, I just met his grandson. Okay. At the hundredth uh, centennial yeah, yeah. anniversary. Uh, yeah. I, I heard stories about Eddie. I was, I've heard various stories about Eddie, but no, I never had the pleasure okay. to meet him. Okay. I met Doug Harvey at the end of his career. Right. Uh, yeah. Rocco Richard. Naturally, Brody Howe. I played against that guy. Yeah, I know. You know and, I know. Uh, you talk about a hard nosed player. Yeah. A guy who was tough, uh, you know, in all aspects of the game. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <coughs> but, you know, it, it was a great era. I mean, I, I couldn't, I mean, played against Henry Richard. I know. You know, and I, yeah. you know, I, I sit there at home and I say, you know, Dad. Watching the Stanley Cup or watching the Montreal Canadiens and whatever in the young days or whatever, and yeah, and saying, oh, God, would that be something to play against those gentlemen? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and it, it was just, it just great. And and you made it, and you made it there, and you and played. You know, that's the big thing. Yeah, you know, I mean, I wonder if all the school teachers that when I missed school and they didn't go to class and whatever, they were saying, you know, I said I'm going to be a hockey player, and they said, Nah, you'll never make it. <laughs> yeah, and sure enough. I made it, which yeah. I was very proud of, and so was my mom and my father were very happy. Ah, well, that's yeah. well said. Look, you mentioned, um, you know, been married 62 years. I think, you are you 63 years knowing Phil Esposito? Who's who? <laughs> <laughs> you had to, oh, wait a minute, you had to bring him up. <laughs> he tells the story, and he just told well, us. You said we went to ask, we should ask him the story, ah, how yeah. you first met. Yeah. If you the recall, very first time you ever met him. He's got a very specific memory that he, he wonders if you... He has a memory about everything. Yeah. Um, I was 15 years old. Yeah. And I was in St. Catharines, Ontario, at training camp for the... Uh, it was that time, the St. Catharines Teepees. The Teepees, yeah. And uh, before they evolved to become the Blackhawks. But anyhow, uh, I'm in my room. I think I went to bed like at 9 o'clock at night or whatever. And all of a sudden, I heard this banging on the damn door. We had a fire escape door. We were yeah, there. hey. And my roommate it. and I are just, what the hell is going on? So, open the door, open the door. The Sioux Mafia <laughs> <laughs> came charging through the, through the door. Curfew at the time were late. They were late coming in or whatever, and Phil came right across my bed, jumped up. Thanks, Archie, thanks, Archie, and away he went to bed. 11 or 12 o'clock at night. They had been over in Buffalo. Having yeah. A, having a good time. Yeah. Uh, that was my first introduction to Phyllis Vizio. I think he got sent home right after that. <laughs> <laughs> I think back, he back to the too. Sioux. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, no, no, he did. He'd say he did get sent yeah. back, right? Yeah. 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 We, weren't, we weren't there to make the team at that period of our right. time. Very yeah. honest, we were there because we were owned by the Blackhawks. Right. And basically, we were in the Blackhawks system. Yeah. And uh, we just graduated up, and all of a sudden, we got a chance to go to a, a tryout in St. Catharines, and that was it. Yeah. And you know, went home after that and had a good exposure and a good time. And uh, basically, next year, came back and made the team. Unbelievable. Yeah. And yeah. we both, Phil and I, made the team at the same time. He played, I even sat in the bench. <laughs> Nothing's <laughs> changed. Well, and now, when you um, made it to the NHL, yes. Phil, Phil was a few years ahead of you. Oh, was he, ever, he was in St. Louis playing with the uh, East, farm team. Yeah, East Pro the, Hockey. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. Was, he was in the East, 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 EPHL. East, EPHL. Yeah, and uh, he tore it up there. Yeah, he tore did. it up. But how did you feel going? Now, did you guys end up rooming together in in Chicago when you no, like no. when you guys got he, together he there? Out. I'm thinking who he's rooming. With. He might have rooming with. Uh, gee, I don't even remember who he was filling in with, but no. I had Elmer Vasco and Bobby Hull. Oh, my two roommates in Chicago. Wow. Like two years I was there. Wow. Yeah. Moose Vasco and yeah, the Golden Vasco. Oh my God. Yeah. Wow. Because um, you scored your first goal against Daddy Jackman, yeah. right? And the and, and the Rangers. Rangers. And and uh, I think December 29th, I believe it was, just after Christmas, mm -hmm. I think in 1964. Whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I, don't remember, the, I don't remember the last one, but no, there. Bill, ha Bill Hay drew one of the assists. Bill Hay was, on, on, Bill, uh, Billy Hay was, was uh, one of the first college graduates yeah. to play in the National Hockey League. I think the yeah. University of Denver. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah. No, I believe you're correct. Yeah. And he won the Calder Trophy. And he won the Trophy. Rookie of the Year. He was on the Million Dollar Line. And, and he was late. Uh, yeah, Belfort, Holland, yeah. and Hay. Yeah. And basically, he was late coming to training camp for some reason or whatever. It was okay. A contract dispute or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Eric Nesterinko got Eric the primary assist. Yeah. On, on your Eric first Nesterinko. goal. 
I mean, I was I was devastated uh, in Chicago. I was the I won the scoring championship in Saint, in St. Catharines, yeah, in the OHA at that time, which was the the league, the big, yeah, the yeah. Big league. yeah, and uh, and I felt I had a place, a, a position. I scored sixty three goals in my last year of junior hockey, and I felt, oh boy, I'm going to jump right into the lineup. I had Kenny Warm, Eric Nesterenko, and Chico Mackey. Well, Chico Mackey was solid because he was the defensive player on the Hall of Esposito line. Yeah. You had Kenny Warren playing with Makita and Moans. Yeah. And you had Eric Nesterenko playing with Billy Hay and yeah. whoever. Whoever else, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, I figured, you know, I, maybe it was a little cocky. Yeah. Thinking that I deserved a lot more of a shot in Chicago. Yeah. And uh, the trade came and I was devastated. Were you really? Yeah, I was really, really going to a last place team. Yeah, true. And we had just yeah. won, we had just won the uh, Prince of Wales. Prince of Wales yeah. trophy. Yeah. The first time in Chicago they won it because they had the Muldoon. The Muldoon curse, curse 50, 50 years at that, forty years at last. Something like that. Forty and, years. Uh, they yeah. won it, and I think, gee, now I've got a place to, you know, I'm gonna. All of a sudden I wake up and you know, what? March, Hodge traded to Boston and going, oh boy, oh boy. Boston. Yeah. A perennial cellar dweller. Yeah, and you know them and the Rangers were fighting for the last every year six place. Yeah, it's unbelievable, and um, and that was a year of expansion and whatever. Yeah, and thank God it didn't go someplace else. But yeah, uh, went to went to Boston. We had training camp in London, Ontario, and uh, yeah, it's a good thing. A blessing about being traded is you're going with people that you know. Yeah, you know, as yeah. you know, in Stanfield, we came up in the Blackhawk system yep. all together. Yep, and so it, it was it made it a little easier. Yeah. yeah, and when I got there, there was a guy there that they had just traded Murray Oliver for from Toronto, Eddie Shack. Eddie Shack, oh my and God! I'm going, yeah, we'd be going around this way in the warm up, and Shacky be going the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about keeping your head up during warm up. Yeah, really. Uh, but if he was a great fit for the Boston Bruins, he became uh, a character. Yeah, he became uh, somebody that you kept us light and loose yeah. in the locker room. And you remember him and Zydell? I wasn't there then. Oh yes, we were in Philadelphia. Yeah. And, uh, him yeah. and Shaggy went at it. And, uh, yeah. But anyhow, uh, it was it was a good time. It was good fit. Teddy Green was just coming off a serious injury. Yeah. Uh, his knee was going bad and Bobby was Bobby. Yeah. Bobby was coming into his own. Uh, it just meshed. It just fit together. We had a guy yeah. by the name of Tommy Williams. Yep. Was our left winger. Yeah. A right handed shot playing left wing with us. And, uh, was he American? The, yeah, he yeah, was American. American. He yeah. was on the 80 team of squad. That's, squad that, that's right, yeah. The 60 and, team, yeah, 1960. And basically, yeah. uh, Derek Sanderson was yep. at the training Turk. camp, and yeah. Derek was oh. just coming, you know, Derek was just becoming Derek. Yeah. And it, it worked out It worked out to be great. You know, who, whoever put the lines together, whoever came up with the ideas of uh, fitting this person with that person. Yeah. I mean, great. I give Harry Simmons a tremendous amount of credit. No question. Uh, but I give Mill Schmidt the biggest credit of all. Yeah. Making that deal. Yeah. How he made that deal with Chicago, I don't know. Highway robbery. Highway well, robbery. at the time, yeah. yeah. You never know what a trade's going to do until the end. No, I know. Until it fits. Until yeah. things start working out. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, Marat, Norris, and Martin. I, I mean, I guess Pitt Martin is the, is the key going the other way. Yeah. But. I mean, at that point, Phil in Chicago was starting to come into his own. Like oh, we just talked about yeah, this with him, yeah, yeah. you know, and and it was it, it seemed I was too young to appreciate what that would have meant at that time. But years later, I talked like Bobby Hall, God rest his soul, became a very good friend of mine, and to the day he died, it's the worst trade in Chicago history. Like it just ripped the heart right out of him losing you guys. And, you know, and I hated the role I played in Chicago as a policeman or somebody who was a yeah. Big strong guy or whatever. It, 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 it just that was not what I wanted to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought I had a gift. I thought I had yeah. a gift. I mean, I, I certainly was, gift, was not as gifted as the players are today in the game. I mean, the puck was square after I finished sick handling with it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, Ken. I think you're being pretty humble there, buddy. You're, yeah. you're picking up 50 goals on 100 points. 100, so. 100, yeah, and you know. 20, I remember when 20 goals was a like yeah, that was, yeah. a, that was a great that was a measuring stone. That was yeah. a measuring stone. Yeah. You got 20 goals and you wanted to quit. You didn't want to get 21 or 22 because they wanted 24, 25. Yeah, that's right. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 I and I remember we used to talk about somebody. You had a 30 goal season. And that was like, like you know yeah, what I mean, over talking. the top. Yeah. And so I mean, and how many times did you hit 20 goals? 
That's, uh, that's probably maybe 10 or 12 times. Yeah, at least 10. Yeah. So there least you go. Yeah. You, you were, you were 328 times. No, no, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. All on my Is back hand, too, by No, but the, the <laughs> guys, like, you know, you did have a skill. Mm. I mean, I, I, and, 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 cer it. and yep. certainly in Boston, uh, from, from my record, I mean, from being a fan, I never thought of you as a bruiser. I always thought of you as a, as a, as a part of the goal scoring like I never really looked at it from that way, and and, and I don't, I, I have no recollection we of any time. We in developed Chicago. an identity in Boston. The Big Bad Bruins. Big Bad Bruins. Yeah. One for all, all for one. Yeah. And, you know. And yeah. At that time, you could empty the bench and get into an altercation. Yeah. Or whatever. If somebody Bobby Orr was hurt or Espinosa was hurt. Yeah. Charge over the wheel. Yeah. yeah. And we intimidated a lot of teams. Yes, you did. And especially in that building. Yeah. It was so damn small. The ice surface was so small. We were so, we were probably. The biggest wine in hockey at one time. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, definitely. Phil, Phil called us the fat wine. I don't believe Phil meant that, but anyway, <laughs> called us the fat wine. But anyhow, we could intimidate people coming yeah. into our building. So it was almost a one or two goal deficit for that team coming into play us. Yeah. And we'd be sitting there licking our chops waiting for a team to come in, especially expansion teams. You yeah. know, Minnesota, yeah. LA, Oakland, you know, whoever it was. Yeah. So uh, basically, it was a good era. It was a good time uh, associated with the Bruins and the building of the team and building character yeah. and building a rapport that, you know, we weren't going to be pushed around. No, and definitely not. I think that's not. one of the things that Milt Schmidt did when he brought Eddie Shack in yeah. and he brought in some of the other players he brought in to fit into the mold that he was looking for. Yeah. 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 I mean, even, even a guy like Gase Bailey, you know, he didn't take any crap from no. anybody. And, you know, it, it, was, <clears throat> it was contagious. Yeah. Yeah, if, if it was you, Chris, or if you yeah. would just feel strength because the other guy beside you was going to back you up. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. got in trouble, we were all there together. Yeah, like I'm a couple of years older than Chris, so that those are very formative years for me. And I remember you. <laughs> That's being pretty freaking tough. I mean, you think of the wingers, odds yeah. and Cashman. Like, no, no, no. But I, what I'm saying is that the, the first thing when you think here at Ken Hodge. You don't think Dave Semenko. No. Right? No, but you know what you, you think? It's the expression that wasn't used then, but became a thing right. 15 years later. It was a power forward. Yes. Let me put it That's way. what you were. You take Philadelphia, Broadway, yes. Holy, and you take these, they modeled themselves after us. 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. 100% they did. People became bigger, yeah. stronger. Yeah. At one time, I mean, you had to be fast. Yeah. I mean, I remember the Montreal Canadiens. Sure, fire wagon hockey in the 50s. I mean, if you didn't have speed. Yeah. yeah. And that was the way the game was. Yeah. It just evolved. It changed. It right? did. And before you guys, really, to be perfectly honest, you want to talk historically, it was the Leafs of the early 60s yeah. were absolutely ferocious physically. Yeah. They never finished first in the league. Yeah. They they routinely won Stanley Cups right. because they, they, they were they were the con smite at them from the 40s. You can't beat them in the alley. You can't beat them on the ice. Yeah. And they had six or seven guys that were good to go. Well, you guys morphed into that. I don't think uh, Milt or, or the uh, Brain Trust copied the Leafs per se, but you became the big bad Bruins. And uh, look, you and know, I think Milt had that idea. Yeah. And he knew what he knew what he needed. He yeah. Needed, he needed some size, not that Pitt Martin was small or, yeah. or, or Marat was small, but you had Bobby Orr and, and Kills Marat. The two yeah. weren't going to fit together. No. Right. Right. So you had to get one. You yeah. weren't going to get rid of number four. No. So it was a lot easier yeah. to get rid of the other guy. And there was a market for him. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Milt made the deal. And him and Tommy Adam got together. And they, you know, whether I was a throw in or Freddie was a throw in, who the hell cares? Yeah, who cares? He was just happy to be there. Was, hey, yeah. three for and three at the end of the day. It was three bodies yeah. coming, three and bodies going. That was going. the way it was. Yeah. You know, back when you made a trade, three for you know, three. For three. It wasn't yeah. three for two or two no. for one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but things have changed in the game today. Things, things have changed for sure. Well, we, we were talking about that. Is you don't not, you don't longer build a team with players. You build a team with salaries, right? Yeah. Like, well, we have the salary cap now. And now with the cap, play yeah. Play that. But that's that. in all sports. Yeah, yeah football, it is. baseball, hockey, football. You know, whatever it is. Yeah. To have a salary cap now that you yeah. you have to learn to live with. Yeah. And play with them. Yeah. Now I have a question. I haven't asked anybody else this, but when you watch hockey now and you watch your son play. You ever sit back and go, I can do it better? No. No. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, when I watched my son Kenny play, his skill level was a lot higher than mine. I yeah. mean, truthfully, I mean, he could do things because the game has, has it, have evolved yeah. and changed. And the, and the skill level of players was, was changing rapidly. 
And, uh, you know, uh, I, had a, I got a son who was a defenseman. He played Merrimack College, and he was drafted by the Bruins or whatever, and ended up in the farm system or whatever. But a big, bruisy guy or whatever, yeah. 240 pounds or whatever. And, you know, Kenny was just the opposite. Yeah. You know, yeah. And my youngest son, uh, Brendan, was had great skills, but he could do all those things or whatever, and I'd be sitting there, you guys are crazy, I can't do that. And we got to play together in the alumni game back yeah. in Boston, whatever. And that's where I had a lot of fun. I guess. That's where I had a lot of more, I had a lot more fun having the, the three of them on the ice with me and whatever. It was, oh. it was, it was, a, bl- it was yeah. a blast. Yeah, I guess so. What about Bobby Orr? I mean, Who? you, you, yeah, <laughs> Robert Gordon Orr. I mean, you come, like you said, they were last place team. You came there, you were disappointed in the trade. That was pretty interesting to hear you say that that way. It was neat. But when now you're you're seeing Bobby, and now you're seeing him, he's a teammate, he's in the dressing room, you're getting to know him, and you see what he's doing on the ice over that next one or two or three seasons as you guys just climbed all the way to the well, top. Yeah, I remember, I played junior hockey against Bobby. Right, of course. In Oshawa, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. I never had the appreciation of his, of his talent level yeah. until you got to play with him and you saw the things one on one that he yeah. would do with the puck and how he controlled the game yeah. and how he changed the game. The role of a defenseman was don't go over the blue line at one time. Yeah. And you stay back. Yeah. I mean, he just took it to another level. Yeah. And uh, he's just a great player. Yeah. And a great human being on off the ice. Yeah. Really. Yeah, no, he, he, he is that for sure. And you guys win that Stanley Cup in 1970, and his goal is immortalized and of all time. Did Phil ever tell you the story about that? No. Nope. We're going into overtime with St. Louis, and we're sitting in the locker room. Phil's over on the other side. Derek and Phil are sitting together with Johnny Busey, Esposito, and Sanderson. Hodge is over there with Donnie Ori. Uh, I don't know who is on the left. Uh, Ron Murphy's on the left side. And I'm, sorry, I'm waiting for Harry to come up to him. Come up with a lineup. Who's going on the ice? We're, we're all thinking, you know, shit, here, we're going to go on the ice, you know, Phil and Ken and Cashman. We're going to start the game and we're going to get the first goal. Harry comes in and he announces the lineup Westfall, Sanderson, Wayne Carlton. And Wayne Carlton. <laughs> and you're sitting there, what? What? <laughs> what did he just say? And, Phil, and Sanderson turns to Phil, don't worry, Phil, I'll get the first goal. Phil looks so at you like, hell, you will. <laughs> sure enough. 30 seconds into the game, bing, bang, boom, gone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just... In OT. Yeah, OT. in OT. Yeah. And we just, you know, but that's Harry sitting in the room. And his, Harry's philosophy was they were going to put their top line out. Right. And he wanted to put his defensive line out. Yeah. Which yeah. was Sanderson, Carl, and, and Westbrook. And Eddie, yeah. It's hard to believe Derek Sanderson as the def- on a defensive line. But he, he was. So much skill. He was. I know, but he was. Nobody, nobody could beat him on the face. He was a no. great face. Yeah. Unbelievable in draws. And, and him and Westfall penalty killing. Absolutely. Yeah. The best. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. But what he could do with the puck, though. I always thought. I, he was the first time. I, and I still I still do this. I still make this play. With the whole behind the back pass, but a forward pass, but behind his back. I yeah. saw him do it in a game. And I thought, oh, I got to do that. I got oh, yeah. <laughs> to do that. Awesome. You know. How many guys, do you, how many kids do you think in Boston we're emulating Bobby or flying through yeah, the air. Yeah. Oh, it's street hockey. <laughs> thousands <laughs> upon thousands. Exactly. Exactly. They, 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 I can tell you one thing. They did it in Coniston, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They were we did it there. Everywhere. We did it everywhere. It was, oh, it was, yeah, I mean, they show that highlight film all the time. Non-stop. Yeah. It's, 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 just, it's probably one of the, the best goals ever yeah. scored in a dramatic fashion. Fa- oh, without question. Yeah. In, it, you got that in the NHL and you got Henderson in the Summit Series and those, those two cut like from an international point of view and you got Bobby's from the NHL point of view both I mean Henderson goal come with 34 seconds to go and what it meant for the series and the month and everything else and Bobby's like you said to win the Stanley Cup and then Noel Picard gives him a little bit of a helping hand and uh, Glenn, Hall, Glenn Hall tells a story he says when they're doing a, a, a signing the other him and uh, Picard and, and Oregon he said, Bobby, did you ever score any other goals? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I heard that before. That's such a good line. Just, 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 I mean, uh, Glenn Hall. Bobby, you are a great goal, and i a huge fan, and I have it. It's in my office. You know, you've seen yes, it. Yes, I've seen it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What was your favorite goal that you ever scored? That you remember and you go. Jeez, i got a great story to tell you a little bit about scoring goals. We are playing New York in the playoffs. And I'm having a great, uh, I got to score a hat trick against the Rangers. Yep. The 72? 
and all of a sudden, right, overtime comes. Ace Bailey jumps off the bench, scores a winning goal, goes around Brad Barr, scores a winning goal, gets the top headlines. I score three <laughs> damn goals, he gets one, and he, Ace Bailey wins the game. <laughs> I mean, just yeah. I mean, those are those are anecdotes. I mean, those are yeah. things that you yeah you have fun with and whatever. But no, I you know something. I don't think there's one goal that I really honestly remember uh, in a dramatic fashion. I mean, yeah. you can't compare that to the Or goal or any of the goals that Esposito yeah. got or whatever. But uh, you know, I'm just very very fortunate. I was yeah. I was blessed in a certain way that I could put the puck in the net yeah. and uh, you know, that was a talent. That's that's what I had. I I couldn't offer any more. Listen, Ken, this humility that you're giving off, it's just not working. We're going to have to end this interview. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth that you're lying about. Come on. But no, it, 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 I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't think there's one particular moment. You know, it's certainly winning the Stanley Cup, certainly yeah. the playoffs in 72 when I think we as a team uh, – Hated to lose the game in Boston, but hadn't gone to New York and went to New York yep. was a little more satisfying, maybe. Right. Yeah. But I, you know, I think as 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 a group, as a team, as a bunch of guys, the camaraderie that was in that locker room, you just, you know, it, you just wanted to be there. There would be a rush to get to practice to see what was going on in the locker room. No kidding. Really? Eh? Wow. We were, that's how close and tight we were. Yeah. In that locker room. Yeah. And that was our sanctuary. And yeah. I hate. I'm not saying this to be. <laughs> But there was no women allowed in the water. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, really, yeah. and we just, that was, that was our sanctuary. We yeah. Right. Good, and we became friends with the reporters and all yep. that and whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I think women are doing one hell of a job yep. in professional sports today. And I, I, yep. I commend them for that. But that was the sanctuary. We yep. weren't really trained yep. or at least helped in breaking the barrier of having women come in the water. They just came in. Yeah. And we're scattering for towels, and those times yeah. the towels look like uh, taste wash. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, it was just great. The camaraderie of that team. And, and you know, I got to give a guy like Teddy Green a lot of credit. Yeah. You know, when, when I came to Boston, um, they took the C away from Johnny Music. Yeah. And it was Westfall, I think it was Westfall, Esposito, Teddy Green, and, and she four, yeah. had four A's and four stuff. A's, yeah. yeah. And, we got the chief got back. We got to see back the next year or whatever. But anyhow, Teddy Green was a type of guy. I know you don't fool with Teddy. Teddy no. was he the was anchor. Very he was tough, tough. Very, very tough. tough. Yeah. And he he overcame a lot of injuries and everything. Yeah. Well, '69 in Ottawa, that exhibition yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. Mackey. Yeah. 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 William yeah. Mackey was my teammate. My teammate in and, uh, in St. Catharines. Yeah. And, uh, and I was in the hospital, having my appendix out when that happened. Okay. Yeah, in London, it's seven way appendix out, so I didn't get to see it or right. see it or, or whatever. But right. When I heard about it, I was, I was devastated. I yeah. 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 And, you know, and Teddy came back from that. He came back, but he was never, he never, never the Teddy Green. No, no. And then he jumped to the uh, World WHA. Yeah. 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 The Hartford Whalers. And, uh, the, uh, you had a teammate at that time period. Uh, well, a few of those guys. I've gotten to know Don Ori very well, um, obviously, Phil. But you had another guy back then who's become a really, really, really good friend of mine, Rick Smith. I don't know. <laughs> Killing me here. Killing me. Who? <laughs> uh, just with Ricky, I was, we, we just had the centennial. Yeah. He was there and uh, whatever. And it's, it's a great, good teammate. Yeah. Good, solid player. Yeah. Uh, nothing fancy about him or no. whatever. Just a good, solid player. Yeah. And a good teammate. Yeah. And a good friend. And a good friend, eh? He, he, uh, well, he does a ton with the Sens alumni. He does? I yeah. Mean, yeah. Oh, does he really? He, yeah. He, I mean, he, he lives outside of town, but halfway sort of between Ottawa and Kingston. Yeah. So he comes to a lot of the events. Well, for many years he played. Yeah. He continued yeah. to play. Yeah. But yeah. since that's, he comes to the, the golf tournaments and things of that nature this he summer. He played hockey with my son in the alumni did he? back in Boston. Oh, he did, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, so, he's a, he's a beauty. He loves doing it. He's in great shape. He is. He stayed yeah. in shape, yeah. He's not, he's Late sixties. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Cause he came out of the Red Wings. Seventies. He, uh, yeah, he was. Cause he was on the seventy team. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, he's got to be. Yeah, yeah. Gonna... Cause they, they originally he was Red Wing property. Yeah. Cause he played in Hamilton. Right. Well. You must have played junior against him too. I don't think so. No. Did you, you miss playing any junior against him? Okay. I hated that form rink in Hamilton. Oh, my oh yeah. God. Eh? The, the pillars were hanging over the boards. 
Yeah. The steel oh, before they padded them. Yeah. I mean, it was a great it's crazy. Experience. Unbelievable, yeah. man. Unbelievable. What, what uh, so I just, my Chris, I just ask him. No, yeah, I, 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 I would like to monopolize this. <laughs> Can I sit over here? <laughs> Let me sit beside Chris, poor guy. I, 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 well, he's, he can jump in any time. Oh, I, 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 listen, I'm, I'm just happy. That's <laughs> it. Like, I, you know what? And that's without a brew. Well, I, I had a whiskey sour oh, before I came. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah. He did a little something yeah. prime as yeah, well there. So. Oh, boy. Well, that's his drink of choice, by the way. Whiskey sour. Whiskey sour. That yeah. is his absolute drink of choice, which I... With an umbrella. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. he prefers the umbrella. <laughs> Not so much. Probably a cherry in an umbrella. <laughs> I want to ask you about Bobby Hall because it's a unique opportunity to talk to you about guys that you played with and, and, and certainly against as well. And you shared some great stuff about Bobby Orton. You talked about Phil, how far back you guys go. But Bobby Hall in Chicago, when you were there, you come up as a rookie. I mean, him and Stan had to be larger than life. Larger than life. Can you share anything about uh, either dressing room or after games, post games, some of the frivolity? I mean, we all know... Well, when I say we all know, so many people know what the guy did on the ice. He was legendary. But what was he like? What was he like for you off the ice? A great mentor. Yeah. A great mentor to the game, to me, and what it meant the game meant to him. Uh, he would hold a bus up for Grand Ole for yeah. half an hour and a half. We'd be pulling him to get him on the bus for Grand Ole So those stories are true. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, listen, we all know some of the stuff we heard. Yeah. What went on and, yeah. and whatever. And yeah. So you know what? I remember the good things. Yeah. I remember the Bobby Hull that was a mentor to me. Yeah. Uh, took me under his wing when I came to the Blackhawks and uh, really helped me find my way. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I played against him when I was in Boston. And I'll tell you, this is, you know what? He was a competitor. Yeah. And a tough competitor. And, but a great human being, a good guy, and whatever. Yeah. And after he was finished, I mean, we stayed in touch. He was at my house and. and uh, I got to tell you a, a funny anecdote about it. We're, we're sitting around. We just had steaks and lobsters or whatever at the house. And Bobby Hull was doing a thing, an appearance. Yeah. And we're sitting at the, around the dining room table. And uh, I said, Bobby, you can't. We can't go anywhere. We've had a couple of beers and some wine, and we're going to just sit and relax and whatever. He said, Okay. So. And I got my young son there, Brendan, and he's looking at Brent Hull's father. He's looking up at his eyeballs like this big, man. and I'm going, yeah, that's, this is Mr. Ho. He says, yeah, and Bobby says, yeah, I guess we're going to stay here. He reaches up, takes his damn hair off. No. <laughs> puts it on the table. He's, even my hair is tired. He says, I'm not going to do that. My son Brendan's eyes went boing. <laughs> and Bobby was just, uh, Bobby was Bobby. You know, and it, he would want, he made you feel comfortable and made you feel part of the scene, it wasn't just about Bobby Hull. Yeah. You know, if you were there with him or whatever, this is Ken Hodge, this is Phil Esposito, yeah. this is Wayne Chico Mackey. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, he made you feel part of the group. Yeah. And, uh, you know, didn't leave you out there on a, on, a, on, on the ledge waiting. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, but he was just a great guy. It was good to me. I had, I, you know, I, I had no complaints. That's awesome. Yeah. And I said to Phil, uh -oh. when we left, but on camera, because you and Phil are both indirectly responsible for Wayne Gretzky wearing number 99. How would I do that? Because Phil got you to wear 88, and he Thanks. got John Davidson to wear 00. Thanks, you had to remind me. I'm sorry just, about that. I, just, just, just. <laughs> I don't think it was Chris, necessarily Chris, a... Hit him. <laughs> it'll, it'll happen later. And he did. You know, um, is this not a true story? Because I, I, Phil couldn't get seven. He came over in the trade in 75, preceded you. You came in 76, right? You for Middleton. Phil had come over as a new Retail Park, right? So Phil gets 12, five. He's pissed off, can't get seven. Gilbert's got it, obviously. Rod's not giving it up. His career's winding down. Phil goes, he's telling us a story. that, that uh, It was um, uh, the trainer of somebody said, go the double digit. Yeah. Now the story goes, and this is why I'm asking you, for clarification for the first time. Did he go to you and ask you to wear? Allegedly, he was so superstitious, superstitious that he went and asked you to go to a double eight. <laughs> you're, now you're putting me on the spot. Yes, he did. Okay. He asked John Davidson and to, myself. Right. Can I, you know, uh, Steve Vickers. Right, who were eight? Yeah, sorry, Jeff. New York or whatever. 
would probably yeah. Steve would have given it up to me if I really pushed or wanted it or whatever. Yeah. But the number was just as far as I was, it was a number. Yeah. You know, um, it's still number eight in Boston until uh, Cam Neely came. But right. Anyhow, yeah. Uh, it was just a number. I could have cared less if I had ten or twelve or whatever. Back in the old days, you know, they never went to double digits unless you were, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah. And, you know, the goaltenders wore 30. Yeah. And uh, basically, uh, you know, it was whatever was there. Because this is when Gretzky's in the suit, and he can't get nine. He always wore nine, and he couldn't get it. Being worn by a veteran named Brian Gulazzi wouldn't give it up to him. So uh, it was Bumbaco. Gino. Yeah. Gene Bumbaco. I think. And who said to him, why don't you do what Esposito and Hodge are doing in New York? You want to wear nine? Wear 99. Absolutely. And I think a lot of that is, is fabricated because I think a lot of it came from Gordy Howe. Yeah. He, he wanted number nine to emulate. He wanted nine, nine, yeah, because he wore nine his entire right. minor hockey career. Right. The exception of his first season. Talking about Wayne. Yeah, yeah. Wayne's very, 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 very first year of hockey wore number 11. Then he went to nine, and he wore nine all the way through right. until, and even uh, other than we had the three game stint in Peterborough. As a protect at 15, and then he went to the Sioux at 16, and he couldn't get nine. Yeah. And, and he was suggested to go to 99 because of uh, Phil Esposito and Ken Hodge well, in New don't, York. Don't forget that uh, you know, Lemieux went to 66. 66. He yeah. went to nine, flipped the number. Flipped them over. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. You know, a lot of, a lot of anecdotes. Well, like I know it's just an anecdotal thing. Yeah. It's like you being the first non Canadian to score 50. It's anecdotal. But it's still historical. Chris, when the hell do you learn all these good words? Words, 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 words? You've done well in that car. Well, you know what? I have to coach Did he have a whiskey sour? No, no he's, he's, he's only on pints. Oh, on Liam, Liam, Liam is a, he's got a, what, what, what most clinical uh, descriptions would be a, a real problem. Oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Here we go. Problem. Here we go. It's like, here we go. We were, we, I don't we, we feel it's a, a problem plane. at all. We were on a plane, so we were lucky because we get on a plane, and and both Liam Liam has boyish exuberance. I don't know if you've noticed, okay? And and I, I'm glad you're sitting beside me. Yes, well, <laughs> so we're but we're on the plane, which of course gets canceled, right? Yeah. But we're on the plane, and we have to sit, and we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, and so luckily we kind of charm the. The, the, the steward, the, the flight, flight attendant, attendant. Yeah. the flight attendant. I still call them steward. Yeah, I know. Me too. Okay, because my fantasy, she's a steward. <laughs> yes, of course, absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> and so we charm her. Any chance since we're waiting, you know, get us a couple of beer. And so the whole plane, there's 300 people on the plane, sweating, waiting, you know, frustrated about this. And Liam and I, <laughs> these two, these two Canadians, that used to be, Canadian snap and cans. That used to be the funniest sound at the back of the bus. Yeah. Is that, well, the fine opening. Yeah. What, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, so yeah, no, Liam, like, Liam, he he gets his uh, uh, vocabulary and his uh, phraseology uh, all from all, from all from alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. That's, what, that's what I think. Well, I know a lot of guys have got that same thing. <laughs> yeah. Whatever works, right? Yeah. Whatever, whatever works. works. Whatever floats your boat. Um, Ken, just, uh, we won't keep you too much longer. But um, I'm staying the night. Are you? Yeah. Great. I'll tell you. There's a beds upstairs. I'll tell you. This is just such a beautiful home. While we were setting up, you and Chris were talking, and you were talking about that rivalry with the Rangers. Oh. And how, I wonder if you on camera could, have, could go over that a little bit, just about, because you were telling Chris, this wasn't just a rivalry, just spell it out rivalry, just how brutal it was between you guys. Well, both of our teams were basically identically built, okay, except we had Orr, they had Park. Yeah. Uh, and they had some great defensemen, they had some good points, they had two lines. Yeah. Uh, you know, we had two lines, yeah. but they had a defensive line. And we had a defensive line. So basically, we were compared together yeah. as far as, you know. Even the goaltending was. Even kind of the goaltending yeah. was yeah. Yeah. Jackman and Vilmir, John, uh, you know, and Pops and uh, Cheesy. And Johnson and Cheesy. I mean, yeah. uh, and there was a love-hate relationship. We respected them. Yeah. Uh, but we didn't want to lose to them. Yeah. Right. You yeah. know, we just hated them. To come into our building or us to go into their building, and they probably felt the same way. Come, oh, no, we went into yeah. their building. Yeah, that they uh, there was no love lost between us. Yeah, and we wanted to beat them, and not only just beat them, we wanted to really yeah. beat them. Yeah, and uh, it was it was a time 
a bald thing because back originally the Bruins and the Rangers were fighting for last spot. I know. In the 16. Schedule. Boy, did that turn around. And that turned around or whatever. Well, expansion health. Yeah, or whatever, for sure. Or 67 or whatever. But basically, uh, uh, you know, we just built a dislike for each other. Like Ken, yeah. in that playoff game in 71 when uh, Hadfield threw Plant's mask into the crowd and, and Derek and Hadfield went at it, you guys had not one, but two bench clearing brawls in the same game against them. Somebody, somebody threw had a rubber chicken. Yeah. And beat kid, threw it at Derek. He was in the penalty box, or whatever. All over the boards we went, or whatever. And today you couldn't do that. No. Yeah. You couldn't. Uh, you no. Be, somebody would have got a foot stepped on, or somebody would have got injured, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. They talk about the Milbury thing when you hit somebody. I know with, with the with shoe. shoe. Yeah. I mean that that would have been the, a big big lawsuit and whatever. Yeah. And you can't the the, the National Hockey League is really come down on a lot of that stuff. Yeah. They don't want to sell the sure. sport. No, I, yeah, I know. They don't yeah. want to sell the... Yeah. Remember the Bru Remember back in the, when they used to have a... Was it CBS or NBC? Oh, the, the Sunday game of the week? And they had the um, uh, Hanaberry... Uh, yeah. yeah, that oh, was the oh, Peter yeah. Buck. Yeah. Big Bear Peter Buck, Buck, yeah. You know, and, and they wanted to get away from that. Yeah. They, they wanted to change the image of the game, I believe, and, uh, and they've done. Yeah. And, and now you can just see with, uh, with skating outside and, and, and doing the the winter classic and stuff like that, how the, how the game is involved. Yeah. And how people, when you get 60, 70,000 people at a game, yeah. I mean, we'd be happy to get 15, 17,000 into the garden. I know, right. And you get 70,000 people. I mean, uh, I, I was on the ice for an alumni game in, in, at Fenway Park. Yeah. Uh, prior to the Bruins playing the game. And I'll tell you, it was just excitement. Yeah. yeah. It was really excitement. It was fun to be part of it. And, I, and now I know how these young guys feel. Well, and that leads me to ask a question because I thought uh, he was going to ask the last. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got several other questions. <coughs> no, and we're we gonna, won't keep we're, you much longer. Yeah, I know. So yeah, but what it just made me think of something that Ron Duguay had had mentioned, and Ron Duguay said the one one of the things that he misses is the crowds, right? And playing in front of the crowds is a very different experience than me playing in my men's league. <laughs> Okay. You know, no, wow. I, but but I, I oh, I do you miss I, it? Do you miss it? I, I, you know, I can recall being in the Boston Garden and seeing the fans every night. The same people, same people, the same people around yeah. this in our, and you'd be waving to them, you'd talking to them, or whatever, and you became friends with. Them. We'd go out to dinner after the game. The team people would be at the restaurant we were at or whatever, and we'd, we'd go over the game. Buying us a drink and we drink them dinner and whatever. I don't think I ever paid for a drink in Boston until I went with Phil. And you had Phil? Yeah, we'll make sure he sees that. <laughs> but uh, the crowd meant a lot. The support we got from the crowd and knowing that the team, you know, needed that. Yeah. That burst of energy and the and the fans were just tremendous. I mean, as I said earlier on, it was an honor for me to play in the Boston Garden. Yeah. With, with those fans. Yeah, sure. Some of the fans gave you a lot of crap. Yeah. But nine yeah. times out of ten, you got the support and the adulation of, of, of the fans. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, we never had a losing season in Boston or, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so it made it even sure nicer when yeah. you left the building. Yeah. Well, you're winning cups, going to finals, uh, yeah. winning the majority of your games. And you think it's 71, it's not even any of those discussions. Look at your regular season. It's insane. 399 think, goals, 37 team records. I think records. That, was a, that was a devastating loss in 71. Yeah. That, made yeah. us, that made us built up for the 72. For 72, season. yeah. And yeah. Uh, granted, our nemesis wasn't uh, part of it. I mean, Montreal lost out uh, in the 70 series, yeah. and they lost it in the 72 series. They, they, the they, Rangers they, beat Montreal yeah. in, in yeah. 72. So, you're, we you're never right. had to face the, the Bruins. No. Or the Rangers. The, oh, yeah. Yeah. the Habs. The Habs. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, so Let's just say the Leafs. <laughs> well, <laughs> where were they? <laughs> I mean, I, got, I remember a game in Boston. I felt bad for Johnny Gower. I think we won like 7 nothing or 8 nothing or something in, in the first two games of the series in 7. Yeah, yeah. And I really felt bad for Bauer. Yeah. You know, really, I and mean, you know, punch him like was behind the bench. And, uh, whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was uh, 69. That was the yeah. 4B Kennedy. That's when Tim Horton hit, or uh, excuse me, when uh, Pat Quinn hit Bobby yeah. Orr yeah. Oh. and started World War Three, And yeah. then 4B and uh, Johnny McKenzie yeah. 
fought like 17 times. And they were friends, you know. And they were they friends, were, I know. They, they, they were friends on the I know, team. I know. Well, 4B played in Boston at one point, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, I know Pi moved around too, right? In Chicago, ha, uh, Bruin. But uh, yeah, the rivalry though, and I'm so glad you touched on it because I uh, just, that Boston, New York rivalry gets, people talk Battle of Alberta, Battle of New York, Montreal, Quebec, and they all deserve their accolades in that sense, not accolades, but descriptions. Yeah. But you and New York in your time period yeah. was vicious. That was our that was our love hate relationship. Yeah, we respected them. Yeah, and yet we didn't want to lose them. Well, yeah. and, and I think we also discussed it. It was off camera, but that the the rivalry in in cities you don't get tougher people than New York Boston. Like there's some That's if you're from East tough. Boston, yeah. you know what I mean. And, you know, yeah. from New York, you get some guys from the Bronx. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're they're ready to hate and the and guys. Don't from for, Boston. And don't forget the buildings were a lot different. The buildings were built straight up and down. Yeah, you know, the yeah. second balcony, they were leaning over the right ice. over. They yeah. could throw anything in water that year or whatever. Yeah. Like, so. How far did you live from the from the rink, the Boston Garden? Oh. Did, 15, 20 minutes. But most of the guys I, I it, 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 on it, the it, North Shore, we all lived. I think basically. Uh, yeah, I'd say the uh, majority of all lived in the North Shore. Yeah. Because the South Shore, the commute coming in would have been uh, yeah. terrible coming okay. into the garden. Right. And uh, I think Phil tried that the first year here, and Freddie Stanfield lived in uh, Braintree. Yeah. Uh, where we were in the Saugus area in the North Shore, uh, whatever, and, and he ended up coming up to the North Shore too. Yeah. yeah. Um, Phil was telling us. Oh, here he <laughs> no, no, this is a good one. No, this is easy. Uh, he was just saying. Well, Chris and I are asking him about uh, when you guys won the cup, and and uh, asked about putting it over his head. And Phil said, "I never did." You know, uh, Clarence Campbell called the chief out. Uh, Busick that was took, it. took the cup, went around the ice, went in the locker room, and then you guys went in the locker room. Yeah, like there was nothing like that. there is today. Yeah, I mean, the pictures and the everything that guys do today on the ice to celebrate. Do you remember yeah. in either seventy or seventy two how how the not all the details, but do you remember how the party was? Do you remember where you went or where the team went on either occasion or uh... in the old, in nineteen seventy we won the cup and everything was in the locker room. The festivities right. and the wives were in the Celtics locker room. Okay. Right next to us or whatever. And we never got the share back and forth or whatever. Okay. Um, and the beer would be coming. The champagne was awful. Have you ever had champagne? I mean, it just burns yeah. your eyes. It yeah. Did. We were a beer crew, and Budweiser was one of the biggest sponsors. They were bringing bottled beer, bottled beer, down from the second floor. Okay. To the locker room in cases. And we had uh, we had a celebration. <laughs> and that's, that's basically all we did. I mean... Uh, you know, my parents, my dad, and I think all the par all the families were in the locker room. Really? Yeah. Uh, my dad was there, uh, my son, uh, Phil's father, Eddie yeah. Westfall's father, brothers. I mean, it was just a, Derek Sanderson's father. I mean, it was just a congested area. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we're all just celebrating. I mean, yeah. uh, it's a dream. Yeah. You know, when you grow up in Canada and you see the Montreal Canadiens and Toronto Maple Leafs yeah. and Detroit, where we went, and all of a sudden you get part of that celebration. Yeah. And uh, and the cup was, you know, just great. You know? Similar in '72. Similar. Uh, oh yeah, we were in Mar no, we were in New York when we won the we cup. We were in New York, York. You're on the road. So yeah. we really didn't yeah. do much, and we had a charter back. Yeah. And we went to a um, uh, the Branding Iron, which was a Bobby Orr uh, restaurant uh, in Boston, and uh, our wives would be meeting us there or whatever. But okay. there was bedlam at the airport. Oh yeah, Eastern Terminal was just a mob scene. They were taking the monitors off the wall. It was just crowded. It was jammed. <laughs> How they got word that we were coming in on the charter? Yeah, plane. really. No cell phones or nothing oh, to let oh, you know. God, it was just it was just unbelievable. Wow. And then we had to go through the tunnel to get to the uh, the bar. Really? And, uh, and it was called the Branding Iron. It was the Branding Iron. Bobby Orr had an affiliation with George Page. Okay. And Bobby uh, hosted the party along with George Page. At really? The Branding Iron. Uh, and then we got up the next morning. Yeah. After that celebration, we had to go to uh, City Hall. Okay. And uh, for the parade. For the parade. Yeah. And uh, we had no parade back in that time. We went right to City Hall. Okay. On the balcony in '72. Yeah. From the balcony in '72. That's a, that's the time when Johnny McKenzie threw the beer over the mayor's head. Oh, <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I mean, we could get away with a lot. Believe yeah. Me, believe me, it was a good, good, good era to be a part of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, but there was thousands of people. We were sitting on the balcony at the city hall outside, looking at this throng of people. It was just unbelievable. 
Yeah. We had, didn't have the parade that year. In 70, we had the parade, and it was just, it was, it was jammed. Yeah, bad yeah. yeah. It yeah. was yeah. dental. There was no organization. There was yeah. no, you know, no organization. You were just in the convertible riding through, and it was just, it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. And, uh, we got there, and, uh, you know, I was just so happy to be part of it. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I think I'm still hung over from the night before, <laughs> along, with every, along with everybody else. Yeah, I got to go out to live that and, and say yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And Andy Westfall, in 1970, he worked for Carling's Brewery. Okay. And he had a beer made up with 1970 Stanley Cup champion, Boston Brewery. Really? Oh, really? Uh, those, wow. They're around someplace, and I don't know where they are, but he, wow. had, he had beer made up for So, Phil was telling us about, speaking of memorabilia. Well, this is, yeah. So, there were four of these. Golden pucks. It was <laughs> that that you have one of. I have one of them. Phil and has one original. Original, uh, yeah. Original owners. Uh, yeah. Johnny Busick sold his to somebody back in uh, British Columbia, I believe. Okay. Uh, Bobby Orr lost his to his Alan Eagles. Eagles. That's what yeah. Phil told us. And uh, yeah. Phil yeah. and I are the only two that have it. Yeah. And so and now is it? This is he says it's solid. Is it gold plated? It's solid. 14 karat gold. Solid. It's a, it it's a weighs about puck. four and a half pounds. It's a puck, puck of gold of with the Bruins. Like, because he showed you, he showed us a picture yeah. Yeah. of it, and we have another. We have a picture. We'll post that. Like when we do this too, uh, a picture of it. And so you still have yours. Yep. And wow. and so and obviously you know uh, you have your your son and you have like you have your son your your whole family. Like so, what is the plan? So Phil's. He's been asked about museums and yeah, stuff like that. We've, I've been toying with the idea of doing a lot of things with it or whatever. Uh, but I think I've come to the conclusion that uh, we're going to put it into a family trust. Oh, yeah. And uh, auction it off in some regard or whatever. So yeah, yeah. People have inquired about it and whatever. And uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, truthfully. I mean, yeah. it just sits around and collects dust and whatever. Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, I, I can hold it if you'd like. <laughs> I could probably buy the country. A, base, a great story about that. Is, uh, we, we, we get to, in 71, we got the apartment. I gave it to my dad. I said, Dad, here, I don't like this damn thing. What am I going to do it? And gold was only about $30 an ounce back then or whatever. And um, he says, are you sure? I said, yeah, you can take it back to Canada. I don't like it. I never realized it was the true value or whatever. I was never worried about the true value. Dad comes down, he says, I said, Dad, I'd like, can you bring the puck down? I got somebody who's interested in looking at it. We, were going to do, we did a thing with it, and he says, okay. He brings that, he says, you don't mind, it's a little lighter than what it was when you gave it to me. He says, I had some fillings done in my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I said, ah, oh, Dad. But, uh, you know, it's, what do you do with things like that? You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure well, we have many of them. I mean, well, my thought was, I think it, it's, it's a Hockey Hall of Fame type of thing, because there's not... I don't know of any other team. I've never heard of that as a piece of memorabilia that a team has ever created. And certainly they'd be cost prohibitive now. Yeah. yeah. You, I, I had it, the value of the puck alone, just the gold value, was $50,000. Yeah. The gold value. Yeah. When it was created or put together, I would say probably made about $3,000 when they were doing yeah. Yeah. Uh, the company is out of business now called Belfort Jewelers, uh, who did all the college rings and the high school rings yeah. and all that. Uh, basically, they, they put it together. How yeah. they came up with the idea, I don't know. Yeah. But it's a solid piece of uh, of gold. Well, I wanted to acknowledge the yeah the the that's point scorers. Well, absolutely. And, you know, and, and, and but there's, there's a lot of history that goes with it. Phil yeah. and I have debated back and forth about the, the, the value of yeah, the gold value is one thing, but the yeah. store right. value that's, is that's another. Exactly yeah, that's yeah. that's if you can. That's the why factor here. Yeah. If you can find somebody who really is a historical person, or yeah, the history of the game or whatever, or whatever then it's, then it's yeah. worth something. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. but basically, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my kids used to play with it in the, in the living room on the carpet floor, rolled around or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, back when I got it, I mean, what are you going to do with this damn thing? Yeah, you know? yeah. So probably some of the guys on the team were a little upset that they didn't get part of it. I suppose. Wow. You know, you know but, uh, when they get the 100 points. You had game. seven guys in the top 11 scoring yeah. that year. It's unbelievable. Yeah. 
And Cashman was, I think Cashman was, what, 90 points or something like yeah. that? He wasn't that far behind. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it, was a, it was a great, great time. Yeah. But a very disappointing time. Yeah. We lost out. But like you said, Montreal. a primer maybe for 72. Yeah, yeah. Montreal, Montreal locked us out. Well, Dryden, you know, you get, you get we, how many times do you see a goaltender step up and, and uh, Phil talked about it. Let me we, tell you, it wasn't just Dryden. No. They had four top defensemen for crying out loud. Yeah. There were a wall also. Yeah. yeah. You know, you Jean Blay, Le Perrier, Savard. Robinson. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, they weren't, they weren't slouches. No. Yeah. I think no. all of them were in the Hall of Fame. Well, Perry. that's the other thing that gets lost yeah. over time is that because you guys were 24 points ahead of the standings and it looked like a mismatch because you smoked them at the end of the regular season yeah. when Phil got the 76 goals, he scored a hat trick. And but then Ken starts the playoffs, you know, and it wasn't Phil Beer, it wasn't Rogie Vashon, it was Ken Dryden, and only nobody had a book on him, you know. Yeah, leaning on that yeah. goal stick, yeah. kicking out BBs, yeah. and so. it's still. I mean, the series still went seven games, and right. you know, it, it could have whatever. But I mean, obviously, it proved it wasn't a fluke. They went on and beat Minnesota and beat Chicago. So and, and yeah. also, you stop and think about the team: Chuck, Lemaire, Carl. Yeah, I mean, you go right through that lineup. I yeah, mean, come on. Well, that year, I mean, you yeah. still, you had Bellavo in his last year. Who, like, let, 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 let's be honest, Ken, it all changed in game two. You had a 5-1 lead, they yeah. came back, right? right. 7-5. That, yeah. that, that's where the series... Bobby Russo. Bobby Russo. Yeah, I mean... I mean, it, those names still haunt you. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and the Bruins have always had a little bit of a stigma, you know, going into Montreal and losing to Montreal and whatever, yeah. and I think they... Well, it they, went forever. It went from let's 40, talk, 40, let's just not talk about this. 43 to 88. <laughs> you got to talk about yeah, that. I know. It's, it's factual. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And, yeah. Uh, but they overcame that. They, they, they did. Yeah. 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 Now, when they won that last cup in 2011, yeah. I mean, they beat Montreal in the first round yeah. in overtime yeah. in game seven, as we know, Nathan Horton. So. I still remember the goal that uh, Gabe LaFleur scored. Yeah. You know. Tie the game Rose in seven. Rules were, really. were leading. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. a it's just Montreal amazing. has found a way, it seems, for way. many years yeah. to, like you said, until 88 when Boston finally started getting some W's on their own. But uh, that's great stuff, man. Yeah, you know what, absolutely. You know what, I have to thank you. Before we end this, we're, we're trying to do this thing. And, and I know you like to, you, you used to like to go out and have a good time with guys. Have you ever go to karaoke? Have you ever done that? Listen. Just bad enough hanging around you two guys. You, you, you invite me somewhere? No, 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 no. no. What, if, if you go it's just out, a question. It's just a question. Want to know what's your go-to song at the karaoke bar? If if you were to you're go out, out karaoke what do you, what do you sing when you're in the car? What's your favorite song? That maybe that you might try at a karaoke bar. That's a tough question to ask because I'm a big country and western fan. Yeah, for you. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that Chris does too. So what, yeah, he, Kenny, Kenny yeah. Chesney. Oh, you like Kenny oh. Chesney? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you going to wear it? You're like, no shirt, no shoes? No, 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 better one. Which one? I partied all last night. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. There we have it. There you go. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no, we have it. We have it. And because it, I, I honestly believe that the, the go-to song for somebody's karaoke, actually, it was, to be honest, it was my wife who had suggested it, but the go-to song really tells a lot about the person, right? So we now we know. Went to a party last night. With, yeah. yeah, exactly. So Espo yeah. picked Frankie Valley song. That's right. Espo had a Frankie Valley yeah, song. He's a pussy. Oh, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> we're showing him everything. That's, oh, that's his matter. We're fact. showing him everything. <laughs> he's oh, a pussy. Yeah. Oh, uh, listen. This has been uh, absolutely fabulous. Yeah. Again, uh, you know. I, Can't thank you enough. Uh, yeah, yeah you it, you. it's great. Uh, you know what? And we thank everybody else for watching it. This has been uh, shooting the. Shot with uh, Haas and McGuire. I'm Haas. I'm McGuire. G'day. <laughs>